Hi everyone. Happy Monday. I hope you've had a good day. Today is, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a sad day for me. I was off from work Friday and today, so I had this really long weekend. And of course, if you know me, you won't be surprised to know that I woke up at 5 o'clock every single day. Just because when the sky is on, I'm awake. That's who I am. So welcome to our Facebook Live today. We are going to case the catalog. This is Michelle Salcho, in case you didn't know who I am. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in um, Middle Tennessee. I live outside of Nashville. Hey, Joyce, good to see you. So today we are going to case the annual catalog, but before we get started, I know I will get derailed and forget to remind you that um, my BOGO is going on now. So if you are in person, you can make an appointment to come by. If you are coming here Thursday, for the in-person card class, then you can shop then. Or if you are coming Saturday for the in-person card class, you may shop then. Now, Thursday, we are working with the hand-pinned suite. Pinned, 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 pinned. Uh, they sound pretty much the same coming out of my mouth. Um, but there, it's a lovely, soft suite, uh, paper and stamps. Um, there are dies. I'm not working with the dies this week. I don't think so. Then um, Saturday is the elegantly said suite. Now that punch is on back order until the first week of August, but that is okay. Our class is going to be just fine without it. So I do have a few extra spots in both classes. So if you are interested, then drop me a comment and I'll reach out and we will get you registered. Uh, the Thursday class is not one that you have to pre-register for unless you're going to be here in person. So, um, and transitioning back to in-person combination Zoom and in-person or Facebook Live and in-person, yeah, I'm still working on that. That's going to be a, I have a feeling that's going to be a bit of a learning curve to get back in. There may be a few bumps along the way. So, BOGO classes, um, I've worked on organizing the, my office quite a bit this long weekend. And so you can see behind me that there are now five hanging shelves. Not quite sure what the pattern is there, but they are up and they are functional. And so I am excited. That's wonderful. But um, made a little progress in some of the organizations. So I'm almost ready to give you a, a little bit of a tour over here. Like over here, I have all of my inks and my blends. So almost ready to give you a tour of that um, and maybe the whole office. The BOGO is not upstairs. It is downstairs or I would give you a little bit of a tour of that. But um, hope, hoping to have those items photographed and on my actual website um, sometime this week. So stay tuned. I will get that um, posted as, as quickly as I can. It's a learning curve for me. Um, anyway, let's start stamping. We are going to work today with the In Symmetry stamp set. So um, this appeals to me, um, and I love the, the paper. Um, so that's what we're going to work with. And I love casing the catalog. I love when I'm like, hmm, what do I want to work with? What haven't I worked with? And I can turn to the catalog and generally find something to do, either in some of the bundle focus training that Stampin' Up! has provided for us or in the catalog itself. And Stampin' Up! actually gives us a uh, access to the recipes for all the samples in the catalog. Doesn't always give you the measurements, but it'll tell you um, what color cardstock and inks were used. And, and sometimes you get a little more detail than that. So we are going to stamp, I think we have time to do these two cards, even though I have talked my little mouth off for the last four and a half minutes. Um, so these two cards are the goal, right? Now, in this beautiful paper called Sweet Symmetry, it's a 12 by 12 pack of designer series paper. And so the colors are um, Bumblebee, Calypso Coral, Flirty Flamingo, Knight of Navy, and Just Jade. So I'm just going to pull these papers out so that I can show them to you. And I think, did I end up with one of those? Two, three, four, five. Nope, we need this one. 
Okay, so let's look at this paper. So, I love when you're up close, you don't always see the big pattern. So I love when I can see in the in the in my monitor in my screen what this pattern looks like from a distance. I think that's so cool. So you get this great for um, just backgrounds in general. Then this one. I mean, it's got kind of these kind of diamond shaped patterns going on. I just think that's very cool. Um, and then here is this background, so another more monochromatic background. Um, then this, so we've got some on the diagonal, some lines here, and then a bumblebee pattern on the back, very monochromatic. Then this in um, Night Up Navy, looks like a little misty moonlight would work with that as well. And then this on this side. So, you know, this is one of those, how many squares are there, right? <laughs> um, how many diamonds are there? So if I turn it, I can't really see. It actually doesn't look like a square when I did that, did it? It looks much more like just diamonds. But um, really cool, bright colors. So fun for summer. Another cool little pattern on the back. I think this is very... Very cool. So you can do this one this way to give yourself some horizontal or some vertical. It would work well. And then another bumblebee pattern. All right. Um, I'm just going to check really fast and make sure that I've gone to the right place in Facebook. Um, it's really easy to go to the wrong, wrong place. Um, so let's just see if it'll tell me. <laughs> Hello, Pam. You're not late. We're just getting started. I've just been chit-chatting and I'm trying to make sure that I am where I think I am. And it's, um, okay. Looks like I am. So I'm going to get away from that. Okay. So here are the two cards that we're going to make, All right? I'm going to set those let me get my paper out of the way before I make a big mess of it. But I love this paper and I think that these bold flower floral patterns are very cool. I don't know, is that 70s looking to you all? You know, this, this sort of thing. I'm not sure, but anyway, I've already cut our paper so let me show you what I have. So the colors listed to, to match are just jade and flirty flamingo, but I'm pretty sure that in the catalog they used petal pink, which would be kind of a softer flirty flamingo, and, um, and mint macaron, which would be a little lighter than just jade. So, and I think Petal Pink is better than Blushing Bride, although we may get this together and decide something totally different. But let's give it a whirl. So for our first card, we have a layer of DSP that is almost, you know, we're just leaving a tiny margin on it. Okay, so it is four and an eighth by five and I'm going to say three eighths. Yeah. And then we're going to add a layer of this and then we're going to do some stamping here and add a, a little, our greeting, we're going to stamp on a, a little label of um, mint macaron. All right. So let me these pieces out of the way while we work on these. That's for the other card. Now I went ahead and drew a line down the middle of my cardstock and I've told you before that I like working with this colored cardstock. It helps me see, I can see more clearly where I need to stamp, um, how to line things up. It just helps me a great deal. 
So I am going to grab, let's see, which way do we need to go? So I've moved my inks to their more in a rainbow order, I guess. Um, and I like them very much. Um, and even though I did do not disturb, it doesn't always work quite right. So Just Jade, Bumblebee, and Knight of Navy. All right. Then from the stamp set, and I've not even put these down. Remember, my images are here. So now that I'm using them, I will put them directly onto this and stop using this piece. Okay, so for the first card, I'm just going to go ahead and throw that away. We are going to use this kind of a, this, this pattern reminds me of something that my aunt used to do. Um, what was that called? I'm going to have to reach out to her and find out because I clearly can't remember. I can offer no clues. But it seems like it was with paint and is it French something or other. Okay, now here is a photopolymer stamp that is pretty thin. It would be really easy to bend that in a way I don't want to. So, a couple of things. I could line it up on my grid paper and pick it up. Usually, if I just set it down, let it fall, then it falls fairly straight. The only challenge is on that one, it wants to roll. So, okay, I think I've got that. All right, so, and I'm, you know, now that I do that, I might have the wrong, yeah, that's way too big. Okay, let me grab. Grab this block. My leaves are too big. Definitely need these smaller ones. But I use that one for the next card. Alright, so I'm going to start off by stamping this little stem in Just Jade on the center. So we're going to stamp this center piece and then work our way out. So get that lined up there. Now, I'm not so much a perfectionist that I'm going to, you know, worry too much. Um, now, these stamps are, not, you know, I have not conditioned them. This is actually the first time stamping, so that's my disclaimer if they don't want to stamp exactly with the right amount of coverage. But these look like they're picking up ink well. Okay, so... So I picked up a lot of ink there. I don't know if you can see, but it's almost filled in the crevices, which is not really what I want to do. Okay, and then this one, I'm going to come up really close to the top. Stamp that one. All right, so far so good. Stamping well. All right, now we're going to add a Knight of Navy. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp just to make sure. Yeah, it's going to be, so this is doing well. And with photopolymer, you know, it's easy to see if you've got something like a string. Whatever it is, it's digging in, not turning loose. So I don't know if I've picked up a piece of paper. But it's gone now. So that take your pick tool. You can pick up lots of things. All right, so. There we have it. Quite pretty. Now let's 
clean this one off because we're going to need it with um, Bumblebee the next time. Oh my gosh. Okay, I just realized I've cleaned up and I don't know where my... Um, oh, shoot. Okay. Nobody can it. Where did I put my chamois? Um, hmm. Okay. Up there. That's where I put them. I was a little panicky. Now remember with your photopolymer stamps, they'll come clean with water if you're working with um, our ink pads, not stays on ink, but they may stain a bit. That's okay. Doesn't affect your stamp in the least. Just keep using it. All right, so now, just trying to decide what the best way is going to be to do this next one um, and I think what I would like is to once again have a pencil line to line that up and I know that my width is is correct for the width of my card so let's just see how much space we have and draw that little line okay so, well, if I just split the difference. So this is two and two and about an eighth. So one and a sixteenth should be about the line. But that is clearly not going to be. Let's just get out the ruler and see. Okay, so this little guy, see, you didn't think you'd have to use math after school, did you? This is one and a quarter, so I need this to be over almost, I want it to almost touch. Okay, so, uh, so I'm going to mark this so I know that my, my image is going to take up one and a quarter. So there's one and a quarter. I want just the slightest border. So it is one, two, three eighths. One and three eighths. One, two, three eighths. Okay, I'm not paying attention. What did I just learn there? All right. So it is one and a quarter. And I have one and a half image is one and a half, so three quarters. So three quarters. Three quarters, and it's going to go three quarters. One. Okay, seven eighths. Isn't that where I started? So this is kind of a neat way to draw a line if you ever need to do this. If they're staggered, that may work just well. So this is just about one and a quarter, which is going to be there. Oh my heavens, it really shouldn't be this hard. How are we going to do both cards if I can't do the math here? I'm making this way too hard. Three quarters. We'll do this one. Hold on to that, that thought. Okay, three quarters. We'll do this side, see how it works. 
We're going to come up a little higher. I must be on the metric side. Grab this guy. And I really think I might even start with the bumblebee. Because it's easy enough to straighten out too. So far, so good. So that one's Bumblebee. Is my head in the way? You guys are awfully quiet. Has it been a good day? Joyce, how hot is it over there? It's pretty dang hot here. Okay, now that I've figured out the math, I really like this. Rained all day. Ugh. I was on a call earlier today with some friends from the UK and um, one of them is in Northern Ireland, and she was saying that it was just cold and yuck there. My English friends was hot. So it was all cocktail hour for them, not so much for me. Sixty-six, yeah. That's a little chilly. That's sweatshirt weather for me, for sure. easy to, to stamp with. I'm getting good images. I knocked that all cockeyed. Nice. Okay, now we're going to, I'm going to clean these and then we're going to use, um, car said 93. Thanks. All right, did I get everybody clean? I guess so. All right, so now we are going to. I'm gonna put this one away. So see now I'm just gonna stick these down here to put them away. And I'm finished with this one. So this is a change for our photopolymer stamps. And I am gonna get the hey friend. And I've got a scrap of mint macaron that I'm going to stamp in navy, night of navy. And 
and I'm just giving myself room to, because I don't know how long I want that to be. Oh my gosh, perfect. Okay, I can't take all the credit for this. This is just a well done stamp. Okay. All right, so now let's cut this to about. Okay, I'm going to get this to three quarters. So. So what I'm doing is lining up, so here's the trough, this is where my blade is going to go, and I'm just making sure that the stamped piece is not in that window. So that's how I got that border there, and then I know I want it, to, I've decided I want it to be three quarters, and I turned it the wrong way. And then they took the pick a punch, and this is this is three and a half. And I think let's just punch it, and then we'll see how we like it. I need the machine. So we have this punch that will give you two different edges. So one is going to flag it, the other one's kind of the other way around. And you have a trough that this just slides into. And that is a little bit long, so I'm going to take it off. I still think this side's a little longer. Twenty-seven minutes. I thought I was going to have time to do both of these cards in about half an hour. I'm going to have to pick up my pace a lot. So when I post this on my blog, I will include all of the products that I use today. And you can just click on those and actually order them straight from that. So what happens after I finish the Facebook Live, this gets uploaded to YouTube. And then I take photos of the cards and I post them to my blog. And you can actually get an email notification that, that I have posted. So that is all part of what I've been working on with my website recently. Okay, so now let's find some Tombow glue. This is like Brill cream, you know, a little dab will do you. So, would you agree that that mint just looks like a little softer? And I am not going to pop this up, although I am going to do it this direction. And a little more to the right, not quite centered. For no other reason than I'm doing it the way the catalog did it. <laughs> Tippity do, oh my gosh, yes. Oh. That was some miserable stuff, wasn't it? Okay, now I've got glue on my hands. I'm gonna grab some dimensionals. Now, remember, you put more on these big pieces than you actually need to peel. Right? I'm only going to peel the corners because those middle two are pretty much there just for support, just holding their friend up. And 
this is going to go side to side like that. Oh my gosh, I lost my greeting. And I'll put dimensionals on it as well. And I'm actually going to tie a bow with the white in the twine pack. I can't tell you how nice it is that I've cleaned off this space. I did what I do? Oh my gosh, Pam. I can't believe you said that. All right, so I'm going to tie a double, a double bow. And I get a lot of questions about this. And it's really not difficult. So I've just cut a folded over piece of twine. Now I'm going to go back and cut the loop so that now instead of having two strands to work with, I, I mean instead of having one, I have two. And then this is the only tricky part is deciding how long your tail needs to be. Okay, but So I'm holding this first I hold it with all four fingers in my left hand and my thumb holds it holds it in place and that's pretty much on my middle finger and my ring finger actually my ring finger because this one has to go under now I'm holding the loop between my thumb and my middle finger my index finger has to come out this goes over and then both strands come through I grab that initial tail with my left my right hand and the longer tail as it turns out this time with my left and then I just pull it tight and work it until I think it's about even now if this tail isn't long enough or if you know I can always start over we're gonna this is long enough oops cut that with sharp scissors, paper snips. All right, now I'm actually going to stick this with a glue dot. Well, maybe on the dimensional itself. So I really just want the ends to peek out like that. And since I've used so much of the dimensional on my knot, I'm going to add another one to keep my greeting in place. All right, everybody, play nice. And then we're just going to let this kind of go in the middle. Like that. Now. So it's a little high on this end, so of course I am going to put another dimensional so that I can kind of hold that so that it's not flopping around. There. And then I might trim this just a little bit. Okay, so that took a little longer than I thought it would because I hadn't done my math. but. Isn't that pretty? And that would be so easy to make, you know, a bunch of them. Um, you can see part of my line is still showing through the bumblebee on this side. I'll just come back and get that. Okay. Oh, we need some little bling on this. So I've got the Elegant Faceted Gems, and I am going to just add... A couple there and then one somewhere up here there okay so I use my take my pick tool to pick those up and there you have it and I think that's lovely all right so I'm gonna quickly switch gears and do the other card um, so I've got a petal pink um, okay, I need jade. Let me just put these away really quickly and grab the Calypso Coral that I need. Alright, here's Calypso Coral. 
and um, they did a little heat, heat embossing on this one. So we'll see how time goes. And did I clean? Okay, the one thing about spinning that, so it's a lazy Susan. And I spun it around and now my cleaning is not quite as handy as it was. All right. See so if you clean as you go, just like when you're cooking, right? Some of y'all probably do that. Okay, this is the part that we would heat emboss on. Um, where, oh where. It's okay. this guy and this one. It's, you know what, I don't know that there is an upside, upside, or wrong side to that. All right, we'll go ahead and put this down with some glue. That, honest to gosh, how did I already lose the glue? I just talked about cleaning up there. It just hid in the little corner. So, does this appeal? I mean, is this your style? Would you like to see more of this? I mean, I recognize that it's not going to appeal to everybody. Um, okay, so this one. Okay, I'm going to stamp over towards this side because I know um, I'm going to cut some of it off. And this time we need this larger. This larger flower. I've already got the larger leaves out. And I'll still use a hey friend. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp flower first. Now this one, can you all kind of see how it's bubbly? So this might indicate that this needs to be conditioned. Um, but we'll give it Give it a few seconds to transfer, and then we'll see how. I'm scooting this over one block, which I think is a centimeter, just so that I have what I think is a better line of sight. To the middle. I really did not give myself enough room for all of the... Okay, I'm going to turn it over. Do that again. I came down too low. Okay, but it's... You can see it's transferring nicely. I think you can see that. So even though the bubbles kind of indicated, actually this might be the smaller of the leaves too. I think it is. It is the smaller leaves. I put those away for nothing. Now we have a Zoom call at 7. I'd love it if you joined us for that. Come work on anything you have or just visit. I try to stay awake until 9, but I make no real promises. Okay, so that's the stamping for this part. Then for our card, that's 
it's really short. I think this is supposed to be much more square. I'm going to get a piece of white, stamp it, and then cut it. Because this just doesn't look right at all. It needs to be much more like three and a half by, let's see, I'm like three and a half by three. I'm going to cut it from three and a half square. stamping. No reason to rush. This is the relaxing part of the day. Another good transfer. I feel like I need Hazel here saying, good job, Mamie, good job. She went to church with us on Sunday. She's all potty trained now, so I'm going to, you know, take her potty before we head home because it's a little bit of a drive. And I'm like, well. As long as I'm here, I might as well go too, right? Jesus. Good job, Mamie. Good job. Thanks, babe. Okay, that looks much better. And I think that this could even... Could even take a quarter of an inch off. Um, I'm, I'm quite happy with that though. Not gonna mess with it. Okay, now we need Versamark ink. Where are you, Versamark? There you are. And our Hey Friend again. So the greetings in this set, I like this, best day ever, thanks so much, um, and I kind of like that hey friend, and then you could do thanks so much going in on the inside, or hey friend, I mean, I just, I think this is a good, good versatile set, and even if it's not versatile, I think it's really pretty, I gotta remember to text my aunt and find out what that was that she used to do. That this is reminding me of. Was there something toll? Toll painting? Does that sound right? Sound right to anybody else? No one does. The Scandinavian artwork. Okay, so yeah, I think we're thinking the same thing, Joyce. I don't know that I've got the name right. All right, so Versamark, clear sticky ink, then white embossed powder. Now I'm melting it with the heat tool. I think that's all melted, but it, it does look a little bit uneven. All right, now same thing. I'm going to line this up so that the end is just I think it needs a sixteenth of an inch off the top. Not easy to keep straight. Then typically I would just do this with scissors. But since the trimmer is right here, I used it. 
And then this is one of my favorite things. Oh my gosh. Just to give it a little unique thing. And then the ribbon. Okay. It's right here. This pretty ribbon has got some gold in it. It is Flirty Flamingo. Stuck to my fingers. And I am just going to do, you know, case in the catalog here. Must do it their way. Should get my ribbon scissors, not going to. All right, that's that. And you know, I've totally abandoned that whole clean as you go. You notice that? All right, dimensionals for this guy. Uh, did I remind you that today is the last day to take advantage of the, I'm just calling it the bonus $25 in Stampin' Rewards. So with a $250 order, you would normally receive $25 in Stampin' Rewards. And through today, that is $50 instead. So quite the deal. And they started. All right, let's use some glue dots on this part. And I'm pretty excited to have some people in person on Thursday and Saturday. Oh. Thought I was going to get by without one there. I was wrong. Definitely need some dimensionals so that that doesn't look all. And you know, you can stack your dimensionals. If you ever need something taller, just add another layer. Stack them up. Oh my god, these are super, super sticky dimensionals. I'm trying to twist that just a little bit. There. And then, since that has some gold thread in it, they used the gold, I have no idea what they're called, gold something or other. And I'm just going to put one there. Uh oh, that one seems to. Oh, okay. And card number two. So, case the catalog with this in symmetry stamp set and sweet symmetry DSP. Super fun. So the Zoom link is in this. Um, on this page. It's the same every week and um, just join us at 7 central and I'll see you soon. Take care everybody. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.